Hi everyone, welcome back to Gina's Food Court. If you're a veteran viewer, you know that I move around a lot and Gina's Food Court mobilizes frequently. And that's because the federal government does have a warrant out for my arrest. I kid, I kid. I actually just got my first job out of college and moved into a new apartment in Columbus. I've been busy getting my place set up and of course, stocking up my new kitchen. As a housewarming gift, my Uncle Mike and Aunt Stephanie got me this clay cooker called a Romer Top. All the instructions are in German, and even though I did study German in high school, I'm a little rusty. I mean, I was just baking a fool of myself trying to decipher this thing. Fortunately, the internet is a powerful place and we were able to get directions in English. Since this is my first time using this Romer Top, we're gonna have to go through the initial steps of soaking it in cold water for 30 minutes. You can soak the cooker in the sink, or in a bucket, or you can draw a bath. Maybe light some candles, really set the mood. You know, I mean, your Romer top works hard, and it's about to have a heated day. In the meantime, let's get started on making your dough. Here's what you'll need. Start by heating up your water until it's roughly 110 degrees Fahrenheit and measure out one cup. Sprinkle the yeast on top and let it stand for about five minutes. But keep an eye on it because it will bloom when you yeast expect it. Now we're gonna stir in the salt, sugar, and oil. Transfer this mixture into a larger bowl and gradually start adding in two cups of flour, mixing until fully incorporated. Once the dough begins to form and no longer sticks to the bowl, turn it out onto the table and start kneading it. This can take about 10 minutes because the dough is pretty needy about kneading to be kneaded. Go ahead and roll the dough into a ball and place it in an oiled bowl. Make sure both the dough and the bowl get covered in oil. Then cover with a wet towel and let it stand for about an hour. And don't forget to take your cooker out of the water once it's been in there for 30 minutes. While we wait for the dough to rise, why don't I give you a tour of my new place? My crib, the babe cave, if you will. So when you first walk in, we arrive at the living room. There's a fireplace and an art gallery, complete with masterpieces I painted myself because I'm too cheap to buy real home decor. From here, you can access the balcony or the lakeside overlook. This is equipped with a complimentary immersive wildlife exhibit. You see, you could access the master suite from the balcony, but the wildlife strongly discourages human usage of their half of the balcony. I'm uh, still waiting on their half of the rent, but not sure when that's gonna come in. Moving right along, here we have the dining room slash garage slash yoga studio slash greenhouse directly across from the kitchen, which is fully equipped with an espresso machine, fancy wine rack, and creme brulee blowtorch. And now we come to the bathroom. Oh, look at that, it's bath o'clock. The bathroom is pretty nice, aside from the fact that it occasionally leaks behind the toilet and the water pressure is about as strong as this dryer vent, which I've had to self-repair with duct tape three times now because apparently maintenance doesn't answer the phone around here. The cool thing about the bathroom is that it also has a walk-in closet, but we don't have to look in there. It's already clean. You don't have to check as I already checked for you. Finally, we arrive at the master suite. As you can see, Steve has made himself right at home at my fancy drafting table, which is where I usually sit when I'm pretending that I can read. Looks like we're just out of time. The dough should look like it's nearly doubled in size. They just, they grow up so fast. Go ahead and pat your clay cooker dry and brush the bottom with oil. Then go ahead and line it with parchment paper so the dough doesn't stick. Now we're gonna punch the dough down to get out any air pockets. That was anticlimactic. Go ahead and reshape the dough into a ball again. Put it in the bottom of the clay cooker, cover it with a wet towel, and let it sit for another 45 minutes. In the meantime, please enjoy these impressions of my family when they visited my apartment. Meet my dad, Ben. Ben is an Italian man born and raised in New Jersey. Standing at six foot four, Ben enjoys riding motorcycles, drinking coffee, and showing off his eagle tattoo. Now meet my mom, Kathy. Kathy immigrated to the U.S. from Poland when she was a young adult. With an intimidating stature of five foot three, she enjoys cooking, watching soap operas, and cross-stitch. Next up is my brother, Ben. That's right, my dad and brother are both named Ben. And so is my grandpa. It's kind of an Italian thing. 
This Ben spends his time working 80-hour work weeks, golfing, and drinking Diet Peach Snapple. And of course, we have the family dog, Penny. Penny, eight years old, weighing in at a whopping 35 pounds, spends her days napping, guarding the yard, and chasing birds. Let's see what they had to say about my new place. So this is your new place, huh? I love it. But uh, we will need to put curtains here, yes? Maybe paint the walls, get a heater. Why is it so cold? Oh, normal height ceilings. No, 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 they're nice. It's just, you know, my apartment in Chicago has high vaulted ceilings. So it's just, just a little bit classier, you know? Smoke alarm's been beeping on you, huh, sweetheart? Give me 20 minutes and a cup of coffee. I'll get it all fixed up for you. You see, Jinka, this is why you need a man in your life. A man, he will know how to fix these things for, for you. No, mom, I can <laughs> fix it. Oh, yes, you will fix it. You will just learn to be plumber. Yeah. Yeah, I just have to send an email real quick. You know, my job is very important, Gina. Do you even understand what my company does? No? Here, why don't you sit down and I'll explain it to you for the next three hours. Let's check back in on that dough. Once the time is up, uncover the dough and use a knife to cut shallow slashes across the top of the loaf. Now you can cover it with the top half of the cooker. Start preheating your oven to 475, but put the clay cooker in first. We want the cooker and the dough to heat up with the oven to get the outside nice and crispy. Just crust me on this one. Bake the bread for about an hour. In the meantime, let's check back in on the Grimaldi's. Can you turn the fan on? It is so hot in here. Are you sweating? I'm sweating. Go for Ben. Oh, hey, Kyle. How's it going? No, I'm not busy. I'm just visiting my significantly less successful sibling. It's like they make these things so gosh darn complicated. Jinka? Did you buy these towels? Why would you buy these towels? I have towels from 1985 for you at home. You're wasting your money. Hey, Gina, where do you keep the Snapple in here? All I'm seeing is sustenance food. Penny, go to your bed. Go to your bed. Your bed. take to get a cup of coffee around here oh my gosh Jinka why do you want to live here all by yourself why don't you move back home with me and your father we love you you know you're lucky I keep an extra cubic ton of this stuff in my car I don't know what I'd do if I had to go an entire weekend without any diet peach snapple Once the time is up, if you want the bread a little darker, you can take the top off of the cooker and put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes. Just make sure when you take it out of the oven, you're not using your bare hands, you're using your bare hands. All right, folks, bready or not, here I crumb. It's the moment of truth. Let's see what this bread is looking like. Look at that, what a good looking loaf. When you cut into the bread, it should have a nice aerated crumb. Oh yeah, and that's what it's all about. Now we have to figure out what to do with the bread. You can make a grilled cheese sandwich, or some French toast, or even just regular toast. And as you eat it, you can ponder the many mysteries of bread. Like, how exactly does yeast rise? Why did the French keep bread from us for so long? Can you believe it's not butter? Because frankly, I don't know what to believe. I mean, if it's not butter, what is it? Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gina's Food Court. Do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a recipe. 
See you next time. And as always, bake responsibly.